Hello there, Project Open Mic audience. This is Andre back with another Andre's Mic segment. And I'm following up the last discussion I did, building upon the last two or three discussions. And this time I'm going to be talking about how you move yourself forward into becoming a more positive person after having been a been a negative person. How that change takes effect. Things that you can do in order to promote that change. As I've said before, it's something that has to be active. It's something you have to actively pursue. If you've been engrossed in negativity for a good deal of your life, I understand that that's where your mind is going to be. You're always going to be waiting for the shoe to drop. You're always going to be expecting the next bad thing to happen. The thing is, in order to move forward, you have to get out of that mindset that something bad is going to happen. I'm not saying don't be prepared for something bad to happen, but stop expecting something bad to happen. There's a difference between being prepared for a negative outcome and expecting a negative outcome. When you expect a negative outcome, you have defeated yourself. You're already defeated, and that's going to play into your results. So you have to be thinking... This is something I can do. This is something I'm going to accomplish. This is something I'm going to complete. You have to think that way. You have to think in a forward, progressive manner. Where you make it to one goal and then you're on to the next. You can't be stagnant. You can't stay in place. And you can't tell yourself that you are are incapable of doing something. You have to push yourself forward. If there's something that you are passionate about, something that you really enjoy doing something that you would love to do there are many career options for people out there some people make up their own careers it's up to you in order to do it and the way you do that is by propelling yourself forward taking a chance on something that you want to do now i'm not saying be irresponsible if you're working a nine to five job that is sustaining your sustaining your lifestyle you want to keep that job but the thing is use some of the free time that you have to do that side project that you wanted to work on, to do other things that you were never you weren't doing before, to put your energy into something so you can accomplish some goals. Myself, I've started getting back into writing. I loved to write when I was younger. I was writing poetry, I was writing song lyrics, I was writing stories, <laughs> I was writing plots to comic books, I was coming up with video game premises. I did a lot of that. Like and I'm I'm a writer at heart. I love to write. It's something that's ingrained in me. I mean, I can't draw worth a crap. I wish I could, because if I could draw and write, I'd be awesome. But unfortunately, I didn't grab that talent from the talent pool of my family's genes. (laughs) Unfortunately. And someone could say, well, just practice, practice, practice. I'm sorry, I've tried. There's a difference between saying you're incapable of doing something because you've tested your limits and can't do it. And just, again, telling yourself you're incapable. If you, if you tell yourself you can't do something before you actually attempt to do it and find out that you're just not, it's not one of your skill sets, that's a whole different thing. If you find out something isn't within your skill your skill tree, you got to find something else to do. But if, if you haven't even attempted it, don't defeat yourself on it. Me, I know I am not a hand-drawn artist. I cannot draw. But if you give me a chance to speak and utilize some words, I can be very eloquent and creative, if given the chance. That's why I myself have gotten back into writing my poetry. I've released two books, working on the third, and I'm starting a novel. Um, And my goal is to keep producing things, to keep producing content, no matter what the form is, no matter what the format is. I'm going to keep producing content. I'm going to keep making things. Things that satisfy the inner person in me. That accomplish the things that I want to accomplish. Now, if these things take off and sell well, that's one one thing. If they don't, fine. But I've put the work into them. And to me, no matter what the result, I've done it. I've done it. That's what makes me happy. Now, if it doesn't take off, fine. It's unfortunate. But if it does, then my work is worth something. The energy I'm putting into these things is worth something. The time I'm putting into them is worth something. But even if it doesn't, it's satisfying the need to accomplish a goal. It's satisfying the desire 
to accomplish a goal. If you're somebody who wants to be a writer like me, but you don't know where to go for publishing and stuff like that, Amazon does do publishing. Allow people to do self-publishing. You can just look up kdpamazon.com kdp.amazon.com and you can do self-publishing if you've written a book. I would say, though, that you also have to take time to make sure that you edit and proofread because I made the mistake of putting out something that I had to go fix. Luckily, it's easy to do. <laughs> do with that system is very easy to do it. But sometimes you, you overlook things because you wrote something and maybe your eyes missed it because you're thinking of how you wanted to write it and it's not, you know, what it looks like. That's if somebody's going down the path of writing like I am. But any any desire you want to, anything that you desire to do that you know is not going to harm anyone else, I'd say go for it. Take the time out to do it. Take the time out to accomplish that goal. Take the time out to do something fulfilling to yourself. Because that is what kills that negative stigma. That's what kills those negative thoughts. That's what destroys a negative mindset. Is again, forward progression. Doing something you enjoy. Doing something that makes you happy. Doing something that makes you feel fulfilled. It doesn't matter if you're making money off of it or not. It could just be a hobby. I mean, yeah, it could be a hobby. You just like to write stories and maybe share them with some close friends. You don't necessarily have to go publish them. I'd suggest doing it because you never know what it might take off, but you don't have to. Just like you could, again, you could be somebody who loves to write poetry like I do. Or you could be somebody who likes to do video editing or someone who likes to create documentaries. You don't have to get paid to do those things, but, you know, hey, take a chance on doing it. Take a chance on doing it. Take a chance on yourself. Take a chance to make yourself happy. It's fine to want to be happy with another person, but you also have to be able to be capable of being happy as who you are. Again, that's, that's a mistake I made myself. I was so wrapped up in being happy with the person I was with that I forgot about being happy as who I was. And that made me lose sight of myself. That made me lose sight of who I was becoming before I entered that relationship. that I lost all of that. And I've had to work to regain it. I've had to struggle to regain that part of me. I've had to fight to bring that back to the surface. And it was difficult. There were little bits and pieces of me there. But it wasn't the full unbridled show. It was just, you know, a little flare here, a little flare there, a little spark here. It was a sometimes thing where I was being myself instead of me always being myself. And that negatively impacted my personality because I was, I wasn't being me because I wanted to please the person I was with. And I shouldn't have to adjust who I am to please another person. And that was something I didn't think about I didn't look at that I just thought and it was more or less because I when I care I care deeply so it's it's easy for me to care about someone enough to want to change myself for them but I shouldn't be required to do it and it was because I realized that I guess I had a lot of similarities to an ex that she was with at one point, and anything she said that she didn't like about him, I didn't want to. Exo- I didn't want to be a reminder of him, so I did what was detrimental to me, and just instantly changed a bunch of personality traits that were things that were just ingrained in me. And that this is where I, I got to talking about the uh, conscious and subconscious not matching with each other. Because subconsciously, I was a different person than I was trying to be consciously. And it wasn't out of malice that I was trying to be this other person. It was because of caring about someone enough that I didn't want to be a painful reminder to them of something else. And it 
so badly affected me. It made me regress back into thought processes I had conquered and gotten rid of a long time ago. And I fell back to those things. Things that I had in my early teens. Bridges I had already crossed. I went back over. And that was because I was changing myself to please somebody else. To appease another person's ego and thoughts. And I shouldn't have done that. And I have no one to blame. But myself for that. That was my choice. That was my active choice that was a detriment to me. Because instead of speaking up for myself and saying, just look at me as I am and not look at me for the similarities I have to this other person, it ended up hurting me in the long run. And I will blame myself for that because, again, that was my choice. And I, and I feel more now I'm more myself than I was before. There are still some things that are just going to take some work to get to. And it's not really more, it's not really about my personality. It's about healing from things that I've been through. Things that I've dealt with. That's what I need to work on right now. But alongside of working on things to heal myself as a person, I'm trying to use my experience and my life is... I guess to say bad crap happens and I don't want to be hooked to all the negativity that comes with that. I don't want to be stuck with the negativity that comes with that. I'm trying to do better in my life and make changes for myself that will positively affect myself and other people and use the growing pains I've gone through and the hardships that I've dealt with to say, hey, you don't have to be stuck in this place. You don't have to be stuck in this thought process. You don't have to be stuck in this past that you're trying to get away from. You don't need to be stuck there. You don't, need to, you don't want to forget it because you do want to keep A reminder of your experiences. But you want to have those reminders there more or less so you know what to avoid. Rather than just completely forget them and fall back in line to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. And that's something that takes a lot of growing up to get get yourself used to. To change your mindset to. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of energy to sustain who you are in that manner it takes a lot out of you as well it, it's a fight it's a regular constant fight and it's a fight that you have to find a way to win and in order to, to win that fight you have to positively reinforce yourself and you have to find people who will positively reinforce you you can't be stuck in the past you can't be stuck feeling negative you can't be stuck looking at Anything you've done wrong and say this is who I am. Because that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. You don't have to be the negative things that you've done. You don't have to be that. You can always be better. You can always use your experiences to find a way to fix your life. No matter what's going on. Barring some outside interference. Because sometimes there are situations that are out of your control. But. Speaking for the most part, you as a person can find a way to be happy with yourself. And when you can't do that, you're going to negatively affect everyone around you. It becomes a thing where it just, it, it, the energy you give off will affect the people around you. If you want positivity, you have to give off positive energy. And most people become negative when their subconscious mind and their conscious minds just conflict with each other. As I've said before. Me, now, I feel more my conscious and subconscious align. 
And I feel better about myself as a person than the overall. Again, there are some pains I still have to heal from, but that takes time. That takes... It takes basically waiting it out. But you have to, in that, during that process, during that time frame, find things to make you a better version of yourself and keep going to doing those things. Instead of giving in to whatever negative mindset you have that's making you feel like you're, you're, you've fallen into a hole in the ground and you can't get out of it. The analogy I have for myself when I was in that place so long ago, well, not even so long ago, it wasn't really that long, That it wasn't really that far back, but it started a long time ago. But the, the analogy for me was more or less like I was sliding down a muddy incline into a pit. And every time I tried to struggle and claw my way out, I just slid further down. Until I found something solid to hold on to so I could pull myself up and out. And that was a long, hard fight for me. I won't lie. That, that was a very long and difficult struggle that had I had the right people around me. Or more or less, had I been paying attention to the people that were the right people that were around me. I fed into the people that were negative to me. Because I was feeling negative. I felt horrible about myself. I wasn't accomplishing my goals. I, I felt like my life was just drifting by me. And while I did do things that were good, I didn't feel good about myself. I felt like crap. I felt like utter garbage. I felt like I was the worst person on the face of the planet. I know I wasn't. But that's how I felt. And there was nothing that anyone could say to me that was getting me out of that. Even though I know there were people who were positive in my life. And I keep saying, like, and it, people might think it's a joke. But if I hadn't started doing YouTube videos and gotten the, the positive feedback that I got from the people that viewed my channel... There is a very strong chance that I would not be alive right now. There is a very strong chance I wouldn't be alive right now. Because I needed some positivity. But I couldn't get it where I was. I, I wasn't getting it where I needed it from. And that was a problem. That, and, I, and I think... Honestly, for a while, YouTube became a part of kind of like an addiction for me because it was the only place where I could express my ideas or my thoughts and someone would actually listen to them and not just like brush everything I had to say off. Like, yeah, there are some people that will no matter what, even on YouTube. But I think for the most part, I've gotten more positive feedback than I have negative and that, that's one of the things that kept me going. Because I was always looking for that positive feedback. When you don't get that from people that you're close to, that really does weigh heavily on you. Especially if you've been giving of yourself to be positive for that person. And all you get back is negativity or you don't get anything at all back. It weighs you down. And that's something I don't think a lot of people would really think about. In my personal situation, I know that a, a good deal of people don't actually know these things. There are some people that do because they were physically around to see what I was doing. But then there are others who weren't around and they've only heard the negative stuff about me. So them hearing that, I can't be mad that that's how they think. Because that's all they've heard of me. I can't be mad at them for feeling that way. Even though they don't know who I am. They know really almost literally nothing about me. Other than a few negative things I've done. And sometimes those things are even exaggerated to be blown out of proportion. 
but I even felt like that was true. I felt like that was the truth of me as a person until I decided to, you know, stop looking at myself for all of the negative things I had done and started looking at myself for all of the positive things I could do. That was where the change happened in my life that started to make me feel better. And it's been a struggle in a long growing period in 2019 for me, even though I was still trying to grow at the same time, I was still struggling through that change. And I did fall backwards a little bit. And I did some things that I really regretted doing. But in the long run, after that happened, I found what I needed to be as a person. I found my positive, my positivity again. I found who I could be all over again. And now the struggle for me is to, again, just heal from the things of the hurt I have felt. And to make something of the time I have and make use of the time I have to do something better with myself. That's the one thing that the people that I know of that dislike me aren't going to fully understand. And, and a lot of those people I know are regularly bogged down by negativity. And the saying goes, misery loves company. When you're miserable, you want to make other people miserable. When you're happy, you want to make other people happy. So that's how I've been looking at things. And again, this is why I, I'm doing these talks and these discussions. I feel that the more I do this, the better off things will be for me in the long run. And the more people I can positively affect. Rather than going around losing my head and flipping off the handle all the time, I can now do positive things and be a more productive person. And being able to be more productive makes me happier. I'm a Capricorn, so we are hardworking. And when we can't work, we're, we're freaking thrown... Our, our, our lives are like thrown off majorly. And that's the truth about Capricorns. We, we will work ourselves to death, but we're happy to do it. <laughs> like so, And when we can't do that, things feel odd. They feel weird to us. Because that's just part of, that's part of how we're built. And we can be know-it-alls. I'll, I'll, admit, to, I'll admit to that. We can, we can be know-it-alls. But in the long run, just me individually as a person, without accomplishing anything, it just made my life feel like hell. Anything that I did positive didn't feel positive because I was always bogged down by negativity. I was always sinking in the quicksand with cinder blocks of doubt and self-hate. Which I have luckily grown out of. I've found my way out of that. There are some people who will try to pull me back to that place. And there are some people who can, you know, light that fire extremely quick. But I've gotten to be wise enough to realize when people are trying to uh, get a rise out of me. That I know who to go to when someone tries to get a rise out of me to talk me down from it. Instead of immediately reacting the way that I emotionally want to. I'm stopping, pulling myself back, getting thoughts and opinions from other people that I can be close to to pull me back and keep me from falling 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 back into that path, following that road again. And again, it takes work, but you have to dedicate yourself to doing it. You have to put forth the effort at all times. Instead of allowing yourself to fall prey to the negativity in your life. 
find a way to either counteract it or use it to empower yourself to do something more positive. That's something that a lot of people don't know how to do. Especially with internet culture and we're so far away from everybody that we're talking to. It's easy to negatively, to have a negative emotion and let that ride out than it is to to say, you know what, let me take a moment, not flip off the handle, not lose my mind, and stop and, and wait a second. Because if I was in person, what would I want to do? If I was in person with this person that negatively affected me, would I be so bold to talk crap to him? Or would I try to calmly assess the situation and then make a response? And a lot of people aren't willing to be so bold when they're up close and personal. Me, I just really don't like negatively affecting people. I personally don't. But at the same time, I'm also one that if you treat me a certain way, I'm actually going to treat you that way too. I don't do it on purpose. I really truly don't. It's just how I am. And outside of some personal issues that I've had before, for the most part, if you treat me like crap, I'm going to treat you like crap. That's just how I am. If you treat me nice, I'll treat you nice. It's Again, it's just how I'm built as a person. I I personally reflect what people give to me. That's just how I am. Not everybody's like that. There are... But I I know me personally, I'm that way. Because with the way my personality is, reflecting someone else's emotions at them keeps it off me. (laughs) And that's how it is. It keeps it off me. So if someone's feeding me negativity, be like, yeah, I'll, I'll take some of that on, but I'll be giving them that same thing back. So it is, again, that's just how it is. So that's why I prefer to be positive because who knows, I might run into someone who's also like me who reflects the emotion given to them. So if I'm giving that person negativity and they're reflecting it back at me, I'm just going to reflect it again and then we get stuck in this loop of negativity. But if I give them positive energy and they bounce that back to me and I'm just giving them back positive energy, we're going to be stuck in that cycle. And that's the cycle I prefer to be in. I mean, that's, that's what's logical to me. I mean, I don't know if everyone will see it that way, but that's what logically makes sense to me. But I think I've run this subject as much as I can. Um, if there's anything specific that people would like me to talk about outside of politics, I'm not one into politics. So if, if you want me to talk about something else, I'll definitely consider it. But politics is a subject I'm really not one to really talk about because it's just not where my mind is. I mean, I pay attention, but it, really the getting into a political discussion is not where, really where my mind is. That's it. Thank you for uh, listening. Hope that this was helpful to someone or that maybe somebody got something positive out of it. And hold hold your horses for the next one I come up with. It won't, it probably won't be a direct follow up to this. I don't know. <laughs> I, I have to figure out what I'm going to talk about. But thank you for listening and enjoy your life and peace out. <laughs>